All right, guys, we've been through these settings in ViewSonic so much that they're pretty straightforward, and it's going to be pretty much deja vu if you've seen my other videos. But, hey, I like to do it for each monitor because there's minor changes. And I like to show optimization on how to take advantage of how this screen looks and the HDR settings and all that fun stuff. So right now I actually have the HDR enabled on the desktop. So if I go to display settings and just bring this over here to where you can see it, see the HDR is on. It looks really washed out on my side, but it really makes the hound look actually purple like he's supposed to instead of washed out. So I don't know, give or take, probably leave it enabled for doing videos because it looks nice for you guys. Um, alrighty, so if you press this top button, which there's a G right here, I know that's going to be hard to see because of the monitor and lights shining at the screen, but there's a G here. This will get you to the various different gaming modes, so we can go up and down to go to different custom settings and stuff, but you'll see here, I've got custom presets I can set, console, gaming, light, mobile, and stuff. These aren't letting me change it because of other settings that got enabled, so we'll get to that in a bit. But, you know, then there's the volume for the actual monitor. The volume in this guy is pretty darn loud, so you see I've got it to a 1, because I can hear things just fine at 1. <laughs> Surprising. Decent speakers for a monitor. So, let me go back now. If we click here, we're going to get into the gaming settings. So you can see everything's grayed out. That's expected. So I really like the setup here on the buttons. Okay, FreeSync, as always, if you've got an AMD GPU, turn that thing on. If you don't, if you have an NVIDIA card or you're using an Intel integrated graphics, then just turn it off. And the monitor will still work fine. You just won't get to take advantage of that adaptive refresh rate because that's AMD specific. So we can you can see here arrows are pointing which way to go if we go to display bam we start having some colors here that we can do um you can change the color temperatures to these different things and you know they change how it looks i will say the sr srgb i thought looked the best by far i do recommend that setting so then you've got your color space now this and sorry guys i'll try not to hit the wrong buttons this color space, you just want to leave auto because it'll pick the right thing. So if we go RGB, though, while we've got HDR enabled, look what happens. HDR doesn't use RGB. It's not red, green, blue. What it's using is an ultraviolet spectrum, and then it's, it's, it's YUV. I forget all the total details on it. It's been, a, it's been a while. I forgot to refresh over that. But basically, what it's doing is it's using a UV spectrum and then adjusting that to get the different colors. So it's a little different method. But if you just switch it to auto, it usually will just pick the right one. I haven't seen a problem with that yet. So I just say, leave it to auto and don't worry about it. But then color range, obviously we want full range, but if you leave it to auto, I it's always stuck to that. So I don't think you have to worry about that. Now gamma, these gamma settings are usually somewhere around like 2.0 default and it really washes out the colors. But 2.8 is a little too dark. It looks kind of, it makes everything look a little too dark on the shadowy sides of things. So if you're using, even if you're not, if you're using HDR, 2.6 is great. If you're using standard, um, standard DR, SDR, um, standard dynamic range, I was going to get that. 2.4 might be okay. So, but even then, I mean, if you don't want it to be too bright and burning out your eyes or feeling like your eyes are getting, you know, uh, worn out a little bit, then stick with the 2.6. It seems to be easy on the eyes, and you can adjust a little brightness on your other settings to compensate. So, you know, 2.6, 2.4 seems to be the sweet spot in both cases. All right, um, let's get back to here. Color adjust, color saturation, obviously makes your colors look brighter or duller. 75 seemed perfect to me. Not too crazy, not too ridiculous, but vibrant. So I, that was good for me. All right, image adjust, brightness. That makes sense. Rampage response. Standard was working just fine, but if you feel like you're getting a little bit of tearing or a little bit of some artifacts going on, just, you know, up it there. At 60 hertz, though, the Rampage response didn't seem to make a huge amount of difference. So, you know, if this was 144 hertz refresh range, I think we'd see a difference. HDR10, auto, means that it'll just automatically use it. If you turn it off, then it just leaves it off and you don't have to worry about it. All right, so... HDMI, you got two 2.0s. Do not, if you want 
HDMI, if you want HDR to work, you have to use one of the HDMI ports. If you use DisplayPort, the DisplayPort will not work for HDR. So just keep that in mind. Alrighty, and then, okay, so we're gonna go ahead and do a thing now. Let's go into our display settings and let's turn this HDR off. See, HDR changes everything here. Now that that's off, let's go back into our settings here. Also, I love this VA panel, guys. VAs are just a great panels, I think, for gaming. All right, our HDR is still auto because we can support it. We're gonna turn it off. Now, let's see what we've got here. If we come back, we should start seeing some new options. Now you can see here, we've got custom presets. We can actually change the game modes now. We can use Color X or frames first person shooter or RTS, so on and so forth. So that is only for standard definition, but it helps you get more customization in exactly what kind of look you want to get with this monitor so yeah i'm gonna go back to custom one now let's look at some of these other settings we're almost done here so cancel and i like the the monitor the uh, navigation on this i still mess up with buttons occasionally but this is probably one of the best navigations i have seen it it makes a pretty decent amount of sense so um color temperature now srgb can't use it so we got it, it just default back to native but you can see here srgb is only for HDR. So now we've got a setting we didn't have before. We've looked at the color space, the color range, yada yada, so on and so forth. But black stabilization. This is one of ViewSonic's bread and butter settings. And what this does is it helps compensate for the darks in games so that you can see in shadowy areas without it all getting washed out. And there is 22 levels of it. And I'm going to tell you right now, guys, you are going to find the level that fits perfectly, that keeps your games looking nice so you can see, but not too bright so that it feels good playing the game. And, you know, I've seen anywhere from like, say, 10 to the 12, you know, maybe as high as 15 seems to be ideal. Once you start getting a little bit below, maybe even like 8, it starts really getting dark and looking a little too dark. But guys, once again, you can just play at that setting and see what looks good for you. I'd pr I'll probably keep it around 12 when I'm using standard definition because it looks sharp there. So yeah, I tell you what, that black stabilization feature that ViewSonic has is always an excellent little thing. Now we actually have the view modes too. And I pressed the wrong button again. So now I can go standard, movie, and these are just going to be presets that are going to adjust a bunch of settings to try to make it look like a good viewing experience based on what you're doing at the time. So you probably won't see a whole lot of need to do anything but standard, but that's going to be dependent on, you know, what your personal preferences are. I feel like standard is fine there. So yeah, and then you got your audio still, and then there's the setup menu. <sighs> I'm going to get the right button here. So obviously language, self-explanatory, information, self-explanatory, resolution notice, it's, if that's not self-explanatory, just says, hey, guess what? Um, this is the resolution you're currently viewing. Um, OSD pivot should allow you to uh, change the screen to like a vertical versus uh, um, vertical, if you like, if you uh, turn the monitor, like kind of, if you just turn it up. Something like that. Anyway, losing words, guys, because let me tell you what. So now that we, if we do the OSD pivot, you can see here it turned the menu over. So that way, if you're using the monitor in another angle, you can see the menu easier. So pretty straightforward there, but I know. I'm having trouble using the right words. I'm sorry. Um, timeout, how long you want before. I should have put that higher before I did this video, but it's all right. We haven't done too bad. Background, power indicator, auto power off, sleep, eco mode so we can save some power. And so yeah, a lot of these settings 
are just standard settings for doing, you know, just power and stuff, but they're not going to affect any of your visuals in games and various stuff. So there you go, guys. Hope I got through that as quick as I could. Still, man, it just takes a long time to get through all these settings with HDR. But, hey, hope this video is helpful. <laughs> Catch you later.